For most of us, our homes are the biggest investment we will ever make. And helping homeowners maximize the beauty and the functionality of those spaces is what I do best. No matter your budget or the size of the room or the home that you're renovating, I want to inspire you with design ideas and share insider tips and tricks on how to maximize the wow factor of your remodel while minimizing that budget. But in order to create your dream space, sometimes you've got to take it down to the studs. Today we are tackling an artist's condo remodel. And what this small space lacks in square footage, it definitely makes up for in pure potential. When Sandra moved back to her hometown of Minneapolis, Minnesota to be closer to family and friends, leaving California was a hard step for her and she knew finding a home that was close to nature was crucial. California is a pretty magical place. I was so drawn to the wine country. And I didn't know exactly why that that was so significant, but we do have a family history of, of uh, ancestors having a winery in France. When I returned to Minnesota, um, I, I found, luckily, just out of a, a random answering an ad for a rental, uh, and I landed on this wonderful bluff above the wildlife refuge. And so the location was ideal. The apartment, not so much. <laughs> Although the setting was perfect for Sandra, the interiors left a lot to be desired. At a young age, Sandra moved to France, and that became a driving force for language, friends, food, wine, art, and so many other parts of her life. Well, I always loved to cook um, my whole life. I helped my mother in the kitchen. <laughs> and um, she was a great baker and uh, so I learned a lot from her. When I traveled in Europe and then certainly living in France, I, I grew tremendously impressed with how wonderfully the cuisine and the wine and the culture all came together in France. And so um, I had a great desire to, to accomplish more with my cooking. I love to entertain and so just having people over and having parties and and, um, and making really good food, and, and food that's authentic and from scratch and uh, with all the best ingredients. That's a real joy for me. When I was in my 50s, I committed uh, to four years of a full-time program of studying classical drawing and painting with a Russian uh, teacher um, in Ashland, Oregon. It's something that, that just continued to draw me in, and the more I studied, the more I was taken with wanting to express myself in that way. And through beauty, through, through situation, environment, to just to be able to express who I am, but also share beauty of this world and the beauty that's ins inside of all of us that we can tap into. When Sandra moved back to Minnesota, all of her things were in storage, and she found herself dealing with one of the most traumatic things any of us could ever deal with, a fire. She lost everything. So starting over in her hometown wasn't just starting this chapter of her life over, it was literally starting over with nothing. This space was completely stuck in the 60s. But the dated finishes did not deter her. She saw the potential. I knew right away that it was just not a very functional kitchen. The space was small, um, under 900 square feet, but I knew I could live in it. In order to make this space truly a home, she needed to take it down to the studs. Creating a timeless, high-functioning kitchen was the pivotal part of her design, and she knew that the dining room and the other living room space would follow suit as soon as the kitchen fell into place. So the materials in the kitchen and the setup of the kitchen was just so difficult to handle because it was dark, number one, only one light fixture in the ceiling, and as soon as you walked into the, to the kitchen, the refrigerator kind of stuck out beyond the uh, Formica uh, counters. So that was, that was the first thing you saw, and it just was not a very 
pretty sight. And then uh, the, the countertops were, as I said, for mica and in somewhat disrepair and uh, were kind of a marbly brown. And then the, the cabinetry was very dark, very dark brown and just also in disrepair. It was all um, just kind of a sight. We knew we had to reconfigure the layout to make sense of the space, especially for a chef. In a galley kitchen, if a space is, is organized properly, you can do it because I worked in them before, but professionally, but this was, this was unworkable. Oh, the dining room. Well, the dining room essentially was a multifunctional space and it was a very cramped space and um, and it didn't it didn't feel like a dining room it was it wasn't pretty and it was just a space that had a table in it and some chairs and you know that's where where i ate or worked my desk the flow of the kitchen was totally wrong as soon as you walked in you bumped into the refrigerator and if you were coming in the front door and someone was in the kitchen opening the refrigerator you couldn't get by them Before we jump into the remodel, I want to talk about the most important element of design. You. I always have clients make an inspiration board. Now this is different than a mood board, which is all of your materials you'll be using for the remodel. An inspiration board starts with you walking through your house, your closet, and picking a few pieces, a few materials that you love. This could be a piece of clothing, a leather jacket, a piece of jewelry, a wooden bowl, a textile or pillowcase that you absolutely love. When you pull these items together and you look at them as a palette, it gives you a hint into your own personal style that you might have not even known you had. Amy had me set out an interest board of various colors and textures and things that I, from my life that I really loved. And so I created this storyboard uh, for her and then we talked about that and, and what colors I was drawn to and what materials I liked and from that initial inspiration everything just kind of grew beyond that. When you pull those items together you know you're gonna end up with something that feels incredibly comfortable and authentic to you. One challenge I find that almost all homeowners have is reimagining the layout of your space. Once in a while, there's something in your space that is a complete eyesore that you think you need to get rid of. For Sandra, it was this brick wall that ran from the kitchen and dining room all the way through the living room. In this case, we could leave the brick wall and nothing we were doing in the remodel would hinder us from painting it later if she wanted to or covering it with drywall for that matter. So for now, we're leaving it. One of my pet peeves in kitchens or pantries is lower cabinets with shelving. Drawers, only drawers on the lower. No one wants to have to bend over, get on your knees and look and reach into a cabinet that's two feet deep and dark in the back and you can't see anything you're looking for. It's so frustrating. Pullouts on lower cabinets are the best. Countertops can transform and define a space, and they come in a huge variety of price points. But no matter which material you choose, one thing is always true. The slab thickness, the edge style, the cutouts, and the amount of seams all affect the material and installation costs of your new countertops. For my project, I had about three, um, three bids. It was a matter of interviewing people, having them come in and, and uh, you know, really have a conversation with me. And ultimately, I didn't pick the one that was the lowest price, but I found someone that I really felt that I could work with. And so there was just a good vibe between us and, you know, it all, it all worked out ultimately. Laws and requirements for contractors vary from state to state, but in general, you should be looking for a contractor that is one, licensed, two, has general liability and workers' compensation insurance, and three, has good credit history with their suppliers. 
One of the hardest things for homeowners to do is interview contractors and know who to go with. You often base it on budget, of course, that makes sense, but you also are gonna be working closely with someone for months at a time. And you wanna make sure that someone that is hearing your needs, that you can communicate with well, um, and who is gonna give you an excellent finished product in the end. So one of the things that I really love about this kitchen is that it's so functional. It's, I designed it as a, a space that a chef would want to cook in. Not just me, but anybody. I have um, beautiful cutting boards that are pull. That one is for savory items, one is for sweet items or for fruits, etc. So I have two areas where I can actually um, do prep work and not having to constantly wipe off and, and uh, clean areas thoroughly so that it doesn't absorb flavors. Moving the, the refrigerator to the other side of the, to the space, um, so it's not the first thing you see. You see just beautiful marble countertops. Since this particular kitchen did not have any natural light sources, no windows, no skylights in the space, we knew we had to bring in materials that were reflective and not light absorbing. I love the tile that I found uh, for my backsplash because it's, it's got this unique design that reminds me of time spent in, in Turkey. When you're remodeling a kitchen, the cabinets are a huge budget buster. Your kitchen cabinets can take anywhere from 30 to 50% of your budget. So I needed to have custom cabinets to maximize the space, but they, the cabinetry is costly and it, it, it took about one third of my budget to be able to accomplish that. When you're working with a small space, Having custom cabinets is crucial. You don't have any wiggle room to have filler strips and do ready to assemble or stock cabinetry. You really have to maximize the space. The box stores just did not have that kind of inventory that actually maximized the, the uh, amount of space that I needed for cabinetry. In this condo, the refrigerator that was there was way too big for the space. It should have been counter depth, maybe a little taller. Sizing appliances right for your space is a really important part of a kitchen remodel. But it's also important to put in things that you love and want to use and are going to function for you really well. Sandra often uses large pans and trays for baking, and thoughtful little additions like this deep sink with a pull-down faucet allows for easy cleanup without taking up valuable countertop space. Sandra wanted something that was European and natural and felt kind of organic in the space, but also kept it elevated and classic, and marble was the answer. So another great uh, function of marble is that you can uh, cool the marble down and then you can temper chocolate on it. And so you can actually literally pour a batch of chocolate and then um, slowly cool it down so that you can actually um, keep the, the shine of the chocolate. And that's what tempering is all about, is maintaining the shine in a chocolate. Marble is porous and it is prone to staining. It is also prone to being absolutely fantastic and having tons of personality. I never shy away from materials that look like they're lived in because that's the beauty of our lives, right? So we want to bring in under cabinet light, but we also want to bring in some light with personality. And the dining room was the perfect place to do that. I ultimately decided on a beautiful chandelier in the dining room. And it, it was a wonderful contrast uh, against a brick wall. So it's sort of a bit of glam, and something you really have to see to be able to appreciate. And Amy really brought that out uh, in me to don't be afraid, to be able to insert some glam and contrast. It really turned out beautifully. Layering materials and textures creates interest 
and warmth and makes the space inviting. When you're working with a small space, getting the flooring right is really important. If you break up the floor, it breaks up the lines and breaks up the space. But if you have a continuous floor, it allows you to have a very cohesive design through multiple areas, like for Sandra, the kitchen and the dining room and the living room. So to have one consecutive um, material on the floor, it really opens up the space. You get a sense of flow. Hardwood would have been great, but the, I think the costs were a little high for me, and so I found some materials in the luxury vinyl area that, that worked great for me. Uh, it was more affordable, easier to put in, and um, it, it, it made a great, great look. Vinyl floor is made from PVC, polyvinyl chloride, which is a form of plastic. It can resist everything from liquid spills to the high moisture environment of a basement. It doesn't scratch easily, and if well cared for and maintained, a vinyl floor can last from 10 to 20 years. Initially, the bathroom was not part of the remodel plan, but as everything started coming together and she could see how beautiful the space was going to be, she didn't want to leave just one eyesore left in the condo. Well, one of the great things about remodeling is it, it, you uh, really improve your space, but you know, you also see the defects in other areas that didn't get the remodel. So in the, the last uh, section of my remodel, I, I had to actually upgrade the bathroom a bit. I didn't completely uh, tear out tiles, etc., except for the ones that were on the wall. And, um, and I kind of redid the whole look. So we're just clean and very zen in there. It's very, it's actually really pretty. With a few simple changes, we completely transformed this dated bathroom. Since the condo is cozy in size, Sandra wanted the color scheme to tie into the simple and serene vibe in the new kitchen and living room. A custom vanity was installed to maximize storage and then topped with a bright white countertop and new faucet. A wood-framed mirror replaced the dated mirror panel and a new light fixture with clear glass shades in a timeless style warms up the space. I plan to stay in this condo for a long time, and so I think that this was actually a wonderful return on investment. And to make a place functional as well as beautiful, it's a, it's a real joy to live in. And, and cook in, and uh, entertain. So now that I have a functional kitchen, it's really fun to be able to talk to people who are interested in, in maybe working on some of the projects in their own places. It's been fun to, to be able to bring people in and describe what, what was my thinking um, behind making this kitchen functional. Sandra did a great job maximizing her budget. She put the money into the right pieces of hardscaping, which is the appliances and cabinetry and the flooring and some of the lighting as well, and was able to, you know, save up enough to add a few key elements in the living room to help transform that space on a decor level. So Amy really helped me uh, understand how to find my personal style. So she gave me lots of examples and let me choose what I, what I really was drawn to, but she helped me kind of narrow it down based on my interests and, and style. I mean, that's how you really help people find something that they really want to live with. I really couldn't have done it um, without Amy's help. It's just, uh, she really was a a great inspiration for me to keep going and, and to really find the things that I want. One of my favorite additions to this condo is the gallery wall of art and treasured photos. Not only does this serve as a gorgeous showcase for her work and favorite heirlooms, the wall becomes a conversation piece, all while making the room feel larger. And an added bonus, it keeps the television from being the focal point in a multi-purpose room that's used for both everyday living and entertaining. 
Well, now that the, the project is over, I have found that the, the space is so welcoming. It's beautiful and it's functional at the same time. And it, it's allowed me to really express myself in all the materials and, and knowing that I've chosen them, even though I get so much help from Amy and, and guidance, it still has my stamp on it and I've, I've been able to really um, enjoy all the aspects of the space and, and um, it, it really feels like my own now.